welcome you all to the module 5 part 2 of geotechnical engineering 1 in the part 1 we have discussed what is consolidation process what are the types of consolidation then the consolidometer test and also the methods to determine the magnitude and time period of consolidation and now in this video we will be discussing how to determine the void ratio at the various load increments. So the result of consolidation test it is plotted in a form between void ratio and effective stress. It is required to determine the void ratio at various load increments. So we are applying different load at the different stages. So at each load we have to determine the void ratio. So this is done by the two methods. First one is the height of solids method and second one is the change in void ratio method. So we can see the first method that is height of solids method. It is applicable to both saturated and unsaturated soil. The equivalent height of the solid it is determined from the dry mass of the soil and given by the equation HS that is the height of the solids that is equal to Vs by A which can be written as Ms by G into rho W into 1 by A that is Vs can be written as Ms by G into rho W. HS is the height of solids, Vs is the volume of solids, ms is the dry mass of the solids and a is the cross-sectional area of the specimen. So in this that is vs, vs can be written as that is volume that is equal to mass of solids divided by density of solids. This is the formula that is mass by volume equal to density. So it can be rewritten as in this form. We know that rho s is equal to g into rho w so this equation becomes ms by g rho w into 1 by a now from from the definition of void ratio we have e is equal to volume of voids divided by volume of solids so volume of voids that is vv it can be written as total volume minus volume of solids divided by volume of solids and it can be rewritten as that is volume that is equal to area into height that is a into h minus a into hs that is in terms of vs divided by a into hs which is equal to h minus hs divided by hs so this is the equation in that is from the definition of void ratio where h is the total height now the second method that is the change in void ratio method the final void ratio that is e1 is determined from its water content using the equation e1 is equal to wg so the change in void ratio that is delta e will be written as that is delta e that is change in void ratio is written as 1 plus E1 divided by H into delta H. That is given by the equation. As the void ratio E1 and total height H of the sample are known at the end of the test. The void ratio at any other stage can be detected. So we know at the starting point and end of the test. So the void ratio at any inter mediate stages it can be determined from the change in thickness delta h measured by means of the dial gauge thus the change in void ratio delta e under each pressure increment is calculated by working backwards from the unknown value of void ratio e1 at the end of the test after swelling now the basic definitions the basic definitions which are required for the consolidation test the first thing it is the coefficient of compressibility AV. It is equal to the slope of the E sigma curve at the point of consideration. AV it is given by the equation minus delta E by delta sigma bar. AV decreases with increase in the effective stress. So it is indicated by the negative sign. The unit is meter square per kilonewton. Now next important definition it is the coefficient of volume change MV. 
also known as the coefficient of volume compressibility the volume strain per unit increase in the effective stress that is given by the term mv is equal to minus delta v by v naught by delta sigma bar here also the volume decreases with increase in effective stress so the negative sign is given it can be also be expressed in terms of void ratio or change in thickness of the specimen that is in terms of void ratio we have mb is equal to minus delta e by 1 plus e naught by delta sigma bar and in terms of thickness given by mb is equal to minus delta h by h naught by delta sigma bar now the relationship between av and mb is given as mv that is equal to av by 1 plus e naught so you have to study all the relationship as well as the basic definitions also it is very important now next term it is the compression index cc it is given by the formula cc is equal to minus delta e by log to the base 10 sigma bar by sigma naught bar sigma not bar initial effective stress sigma bar final effective stress and delta e change in void ratio it can also be written as in this form where delta sigma bar is in the change in the effective stress now we have three types of soil that is normally consolidated soil over consolidated soil and under consolidated soil now we can see what is normal consolidated soil the soil which has not been subjected to any pressure greater than the present existing pressure the over consolidated soil the soil which has been subjected to the, in the past to a pressure in excess of the present pressure and under consolidated soil means if the soil has not reached the equilibrium under the application of the overburden loads so these three types of soil it is very important while doing problems also now we can see what is over consolidation ratio over consolidation ratio it can be defined as maximum applied effective stress in the past divided by the present applied effective stress for over consolidated soil the ocr value is greater than 1 and heavily over consolidated much much greater than 1 and for normally consolidated soil usually the ocr value is less than or equal to 1 the maximum value of ocr for normally consolidated soil it is 1 now we can see what is pre consolidation pressure pre consolidation if a soil is consolidated before the stages of construction it is said to be pre consolidation and the pre consolidation pressure is the maximum stress applied by a soil in its life history now we can see what are the causes of pre consolidation first one due to the loads from the building and other structures which has been demolished now, the earlier right of the building over and then the structure so in dire earlier stages le abadiyaru pre-consolidation vanna uri condition pashippam already it may be demolished Pinna due to the overburden of soil which is later removed by erosion that is earlier they may be overburdened soil due to which the pre-consolidation process might have been occurred third one due to the melting of ice which covered the soil deposit in the past so in the past there may be the huge ice deposits which may lead to the pre-consolidation process then due to the capillary action acted on the soil in the past but was later destroyed due to the rise in water table then the last cause it is due to the tectonic force that is earthquakes which become less severe